In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to our midweek Eucharist here at St. Nicholas. Warm welcome to those of you joining me here in the church this morning. And warm welcome to those of you who are watching us online. Alleluia, Christ is risen. And being Thursday, we'll have our prayer for Christian unity and you can see the candles lit in front of the altar. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you have called us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, to continue his work of reconciliation and reveal you to the world. Forgive us our sins which tear us apart. Give us the courage to overcome our fears and to seek that unity which is your gift and your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave us his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Reflecting on our daily lives, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. <clears throat> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our sins forgiven, we stand to say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
we sit for our first reading. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. And an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptised? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. (coughs) Our psalm this morning is Psalm 66, verses 7 to 8, 14 to the end. And the response is on your good morning sheet. Be joyful in God, all the earth. Be joyful in God, all the earth. Bless our God, O you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in life and suffers not our feet to slip. Be joyful in God, all the earth. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. Be joyful in God, all the earth. If I had nursed evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has heeded the voice of my prayer. Be joyful in God, all the earth. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his loving mercy from me. Be joyful in God, all the earth. So we stand for the gospel. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to to you, O Lord. Lord. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learnt from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. 
This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We are now into the third week after Easter. And if I can ask you to cast your mind back three weeks ago, we were commemorating the events of Monday Thursday and the Last Supper. Why is Reverend Amanda getting us looking backwards for a moment? Well, you'll see where this is going. The Gospels of Mark, Matthew, Mark and Luke relate the story of the Last Supper, including the institution of Holy Communion. They share the detail of Jesus' words as he broke the bread and blessed the wine. Now, John's Gospel doesn't relate the institution of Holy Communion. Instead, he focuses on Jesus' washing of the feet of his disciples, which in an earlier sermon at the Baptist Church, I relayed as being a very smelly thing to have to do. Earlier in John's Gospel, the Gospel writer tells and retells the stories of Jesus being the bread of life. So we might not get the institution of communion in John's Gospel, but he refers to Jesus earlier in his, in his Gospel as being the bread of life. And this morning's Gospel reminds us that Jesus is the bread of life. We are also reminded by Jesus' words that it is not we who find Jesus, it is the Father who finds us and leads us to Jesus as the way to God. In this Gospel reading, we also hear Jesus speaking words from the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah. He says, and they shall all be taught by God. And that neatly refers us back to our first reading today about the eunuch who was led to Jesus by God, but via the deacon Philip. We learn the importance of the readiness and openness of the eunuch to be drawn to the truth. The story of the conversion of the eunuch shows us that God draws all kinds of people to himself, and he uses willing followers to help those people he's reaching out to already. And that is what, of course, each of us is called to do. <clears throat> Jesus says again that he is the bread of life, this time using that formal expression, I am, which tells us that this comes from God. It is divine. Unlike the manna that the Jews' ancestors ate in the desert, this bread comes directly from God. The bread that Jesus will give will bring a never-ending life to those who eat it. Jesus is the living bread because he is the very word of God. Holy Communion is the great sign of the Christian community by which we both affirm and celebrate our union with Jesus. Our eating of the bread affirms our obedience to all that Jesus is and stands for. Amen.
we stand to say the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit for our intercessions. Holy and Righteous One, open the mind of your church to the fulfilment of your promised, your promise beyond our imagining. Give us faith to trust in your life restoring power. Raise up faithful witnesses to proclaim the wonders of your love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Holy and righteous one, inspire legislators to defend the dignity of all life. May no one be regarded as being of less worth. Teach us to honour all people as your children. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy and Righteous One, be with all who teach. Sharpen our minds on the wonders of your creation. Nurture wisdom and train us to use the gifts that you give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and Righteous One, we bring before you all who seek your healing grace. This morning we pray especially for Father Tom Keeley, Rita Morton, Sandra Ruff, Bernadette Hoyt, Declan Masterson, Bob Walsh, Paddy Gardner, Marie Marta, John Hallett, Yasmin Warren, Ray Doherty, Peter Lowe, Julie Stainer, Sarah Robinson, John Hemming, George Brown, Alexis Walker, and Jill and Brian Matthews. Pour upon them your consolation, Lord. Strengthen the faint-hearted and give peace to the dying. And Father, we ask that you would welcome into your heavenly realm all those who have died in recent days and weeks. 
including Kevin Parker, Brenda Turner, Joanne Wyatt. And we also remember all those whose anniversaries of death fall at this time, including Irene Moody, Lillian Rose Moore, Mavis Edith Mary Adams, Mary Bell, and Dr. Louisa Raja Kumarai. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise, rise in, in glory. glory. Holy and righteous one, you hold before us a promise of great hope. Bring us to share in the life of your redeemed. Author of life, we look to the final revelation of your eternity. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us acknowledge one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. We sing our first hymn, <clears throat> hymn number 66, Be Still and Know That I Am God.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, look kindly on the gifts of your church gathered in prayer and grant to the faithful who will receive them an increase in holiness and grace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. By the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Mother of God, St Nicholas and all the saints 
may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so in confidence we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in our bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
we sing our second hymn this morning, number 19, All My Hope on God is Founded. <coughs> Let us pray. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. That's all I've got to say. Goodbye. <laughs> Crikey, that would be amazing. <laughs> if only we were a quiet church and nothing was going on. Eh? Yeah, I think we just need to look forward, not too much yeah. looking back. Please. So, um, it's nice to see, I thought I was seeing double this morning. We've got two vicars. Very good. Very good. Um, refreshments as usual after in the chapel. And services for the rest of the week, Sunday morning, 9.30, Holy Communion. Easter 4, 6.30pm evening prayer and Bible reflection led by Julie and then next Thursday back here at 9.30am for midweek Holy Communion and 11 at Skills Court next week. 11 at Skills Court Holy Communion. Holy Communion at Skills Court next week. 
Um, ladies club, you did your Easter stuff? Yes? You know what you're going to do for Easter? You ready for it? And on Saturday, ladies who brunch are off to Rose Cafe at, um, they're not getting up too late, 11 o'clock. Um, they brunch. They, they brunch, yes, they're not like that. The lads getting up early. And then in the evening, that's open to all uh, ladies, not just people that come to church, so anybody in the, in the parish that wants to come along and meet people. And on Saturday evening, 7 o'clock, there is a quiz at the Baptist Church where I think Peter is going and Brenda. All oh, right. Okay. 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 Because Vera's been chasing us from the Baptist Church for numbers. So. Um, and then coming up in the future, 17th of May, Snow's concert. We've got the tickets here this morning, which Ann will have. Well, they're in the vestry for you. There was a lady waiting at the door with a a purse to give me this morning. Uh, five pound for adults, two fifty for children. That's this Friday the seventeenth of May, and in June the thirteenth to the fifteenth, Godspell at Blackmore Village Hall, um, and we're trying to get a group for Saturday the fifteenth. I just realised I've got to be in Madeira, so <laughs> there will be a group hopefully. So if people want to go to that, let us know, and we can get a group of tickets. That's it. Thank you very much. Please stand for the blessing. Know that God guides you on your journey to the cross and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.